Okay guys, so in this one, we're gonna make our, our Django admin be a little bit better functioning for us so uh, we can just work a little bit smarter. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna change the way things are displayed in here. I wanted to show more information about each instance. I don't want just the Unicode. That's actually kind of boring and it doesn't really do a whole lot for me. So let's actually open up our admin.py file. And in here, I'm gonna do class product admin and it's going to take admin dot model admin and it's class meta model equals to product all right so i'm naming it the model right the model and then i'm naming it admin just like what we see here model admin so it's model and then admin so my model is product and it's the product admin so now that i have that i want to register it into the um, to into the admin site with this. So I just added it at the end. So now I can actually make edits to the admin. So if I save it here and go in and refresh, nothing changed. So now I'm actually gonna make it so we can actually see a better list. So I'll use list display and I'm just gonna do title, price, active, and update it. So those are the dif different fields. So if I look at my models, it's the different fields that are in here. Another one you could use instead of title, you could just use Unicode. I'll just show both of them so you can see. And I do a refresh in here. Now I've got a little bit better data. So I can see that, oh, hey, there's the Unicode and then there's the title. Uh, well, if I get rid of the Unicode, the main thing that you'll notice is product will go away and it'll say title. So save this and refresh, get rid of that ordering thing. So we see title and now it's all the titles and then updated is the actual uh, time that it was updated last in the time zone of UTC. So if we go into settings, we'll see it's going off of this time zone right here. And that is what you'll see. So it might not be actually the time zone you're working with. So if you actually wanted to change that time zone, let's actually go ahead and do that. What you need to do is pip install PYTZ, and that stands for Python Time Zone. Um, so once you have that installed, we can jump into Python and import PYTZ. And then if we want to see all of the time zones, we can do PYTZ.all time zones. And that gives us a list of everything. It's not really that clean, so let's actually do it. So four uh, items in PYTZ.all time zones, print items. All right, so now we see all the list of time zones. There's a ton of them in here, so go ahead and pick one. Uh, mine is, I'm gonna do US uh, Pacific, change this to that. And now in the time, if I actually exit out of Python and then run the server, do a refresh, um, I see that now it's giving me the time zones that are accurate. Right, so that's the accurate time zone as far as when it was actually updated, uh, which was like just shortly ago. So if we want to see that in action, I'll just add a new product. So a new product and new product. And I save it. Uh, now I see that, hey, it was just last updated was actually when it was added. Um, so that's perfect. That's what we want to see. All right, so what if we wanted it to be searchable? So if we wanna actually be able to find things inside of our admin. Uh, so inside of like instances that match some type of thing. So all we have to do is add search fields and we're gonna make a list of it. So I'm just gonna add title and description. All right, so if I go back in here and do a refresh, I now have this search button here. So a new product, um, I could search, let's search out product. And I see new product and this is the title. So if I click on that, oh, we see the description has product in it too. So perfect, that's what we wanna see. And another thing to note is it added uh, this little attribute onto our, onto our uh, URL so we can get rid of that and that takes the search away. Um, so that's nice, it allows us to search and there is a way to search foreign keys. So once we get to that, we will talk about that too. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it, we will come back. Um, so now that we have this, well, I can search things, but I can't really change anything in bulk, right? If I wanted to be able to change the price of this one and the price of this one, 
I really couldn't as it is now without actually clicking on it. So uh, it's also easy to change since it's in list display. So it's in this list, I can actually edit it. So list editable and we can do price and active. All right, so I come back in here and I refresh and now I can actually change the price on any of these and I can change whether or not it's active, hit save, and we see that now it's inactive and if I sort it by updated, um, I will see, oh, the most recent updated were these two and they were updated at the same time. That's great, so that's what I kind of wanted to see. I wanted to see the ability to actually edit things in real time and I would recommend if you wanted to do this, you would want to keep it on something simple like price and active. If it's something long like description, I would leave that in the actual instance itself. I wouldn't actually edit it in here or even display it in here because it just adds too much data and it gets really jumbled and kind of crowded. Um, all right, so now what if I wanted to filter things by a certain type of filter? So like I want to see all the things that are priced at $29.99 and then all the things that are $39.99 and so on. Um, we can just add a list filter here and I'm going to do it by price and we can also do it by active. So if I refresh in here, I now see that I have two filters that I can do it by active and price. So if it's not active, it's only going to show that. And if I do a price, it's going to show $29.99 that is not active, $29.99 that is active. Here's two of them. So it will make it easy for me to, oh, okay, now I want to do $21.99. Save it and it gives me that new filter and there you go so you can actually play around with filters that way uh, it's pretty nice that we can check that so if i do product and then i do filter we also have product and filter so it's working those two things in together uh, which is also pretty cool uh, makes it a little bit easier on us when we actually want to make changes if we have a lot of products if you don't have that many products the filter and search won't be that big of a deal because if you only have like 10 products or two products you won't need those things, so you won't even need to add it into your admin. And I would suggest you don't add it if you only have a few products. There's really really no reason to add too much stuff if you don't need it. Okay, so now that we have this stuff, um, we also, I wanna add one more thing is a date hierarchy. Um, so at the very top, we wanna add like a filter up here basically that would separate our different models based on a date. So date hierarchy and I'm gonna set it as timestamp. You can also use updated, but it does have to be either a date model, uh, but likely it's a date and time model to get the best accurate. So date, time, field, excuse me, not model, but date, time, field of either, we'll do timestamp or updated. In this case, I did timestamp, so you can also do updated. I'll just leave that in there as a note. So if I refresh in here, I see that I can actually click on different days and it'll now show me that stuff. Right, and I can even go to a different year or even all dates. Um, so if you have products that are super old and you want to reference them again, and maybe they're super old and inactive, but they're still in your database, that would that's something that you'd be able to do. All right, so now that we have that stuff, um, there's one last thing I want to talk about, and that would be read-only fields. So read-only fields, oops, read-only fields. And we are gonna say add in updated and timestamp. I'm gonna keep I'm actually gonna comment out for a second so we can look into our model and we notice that hey it, it has title, description, price, and slug. It doesn't have an active, it doesn't have um, timestamp and updated. So if we add these read-only fields and we refresh it in here, we can actually see those because they're really read-only. And the reason they're read only and that we can't change them is because we have these auto on here. So if these were two false ones, then it would have came in as a field uh, by default. So that's another thing to note. Um, so yeah. And then to make it a little bit smarter for us, we can also do pre-populated fields. So this is gonna basically add fields based on what we're typing for another field. Um, so in this case, I'm gonna do it with slug. So slug and it's going to be equal to a title to uh, tuple with a title so the slug is going to be pre-populated based off of the of the title so let's see that in action if I add a new product I say new product is here notice that it's also typing the slug part out for me and it escapes 
things that shouldn't be in a slug like is. So it actually makes the slug a little bit better for me. Notice that update and timestamp say none, and that's because they're not existing yet. So once I hit save, and I go to new product is here, it shows the timestamp and it also made uh, the slug for me, uh, which is perfect. So that's a little bit of Django admin um, customization for any particular model. Again, we will revisit this later when we have to do other types of changes. Uh, but for now, that's a good start. So let me know if you have any questions on this. Otherwise, let's keep going.